East, Mike, other than delays in our typical trouble spots at 858 in the morning, nothing out of the ordinary to slow you down on your way out the door. 290 eastbound, nice and slow as you make your way towards Main Street in the big blue water tower. 190 south, especially slow for a couple miles in between Sheridan Drive and Ontario Street, which is where you see the red on our maps. And then the 90 eastbound is also slowing way down in between the 190 and the entrance to the 33. No major accidents, though. Really just typical rush hour delays. Back to you. Dry roads out there, bare pavement on all of the major highways and the the main roads. You might have to dust a little bit of snow cover off your car this morning and you might have a little bit of it on your driveway or the side streets, but everything's working really well. Drive time's completely up to speed all over. If you are headed on the throughway right now from the Lackawanna Tolls eastbound towards the 290, things are timing out right where they should be at 10 minutes 6 if you are coming from the 400. Back to you. Thanks, Mike. You sure will have to do a little bit of scraping if you parked outside this morning. There was a layer of ice under snow on my car at least, so get that ice scraper ready, but once you make it out to the roads, everything is really in good shape. Here's the 33. Things starting to fill in a little bit more now, but still pretty quiet out there to kick off your Friday. Over on the maps, nothing major. No accidents or major delays in place yet. Drive time's pretty much up to speed on the 33. Same with the 290 mainline throughway and the 190. Police in Amherst are still asking people to avoid Sheridan Drive right at Troy Del Way. They do have some lanes blocked off for an overnight accident investigation. Of course, we'll keep you posted. Let you know as soon as we hear that that's clear. Right here on Wake Up. Back to you. Water Tower, remember, they ramped to the 90 will be reduced by lane for the rest of the week. No issues in and around the city. Just remember those road closures in Elma, right by Bullis Road and Girdle Road, where that was that crash last night. Authorities want you to steer clear of it throughout this morning. Back to you. Over on the maps, want to let you know about a couple things happening downtown today and tomorrow. We do have some lane restrictions on Oak Street in the southbound lanes. There is a two-day construction project in between Clinton Street, Seneca Street. The crews will be there between 9 and 5, both today and tomorrow. And another reminder, game night traffic tonight around First Niagara Center. Sabres are back to play against the Bruins at 7. Tomorrow night, a portion of the 33 will be shut down overnight. So that's Wednesday into Thursday in Cheektowaga in between Union Road and Genesee. They will be replacing the signs on that part of the highway. Well, of course, we'll keep you posted on that and remind you about it tomorrow morning here on Wake Up as well. Back to you. Correction, all the way from this camera right at Ridge Road, you can see the delays. You can see so many cars really just at a standstill. They're moving very slowly. That's because of an accident on the Skyway, a disabled vehicle on the outbound Skyway, blocking the right lane there, but causing some rubbernecking delays for the folks headed into the city. The fog in the area, very dense, hard to see once you make your way towards the city on Route 5, so plan plenty of extra time that way. Good morning to you, Teresa. Good morning to you at home. Around here, not too many travel troubles. If you're headed out towards the 190 by Sheridan Drive, you'll see a lot of snow off to the side of the road, but the roads themselves are really down to bare pavement. That's for all of our major highways. There might be some slick spots, a little bit of snow left from overnight on your driveway or side streets, but our map is just as it should be at this hour. 190 South looking good headed into the city. Same with the main line through a 290. Also problem free. No issues on the 33 either. I'll see you again in about 15 minutes with another update on your commute. Back to you. Looking okay at the Skyway right by Canal Side, but just in the last 10 minutes, we got word that part of Route 5 in Hamburg is now too dangerous to pass because of flooding. So as we head over to the maps, you see our red icon there now. It is Route 5 in between Big Tree and Camp Road blocked off due to that flooding this morning. It is closed until further notice. Back to you, Teresa. We do have a big accident, though, in the town of Royalton. We'll head over to the maps and show you exactly where that is. It has shut down a part of Akron Road. It's right at the intersection of Akron Road and Deisinger Road. Mercy Flight is on the way there. Emergency crews are on the scene, so you'll want to avoid Akron Road between Deisinger Road and Singer Road for right now. Of course, we'll keep you posted on what's going on there, and as soon as it's clear, we'll let you know right here on Wake Up. Back over to you. We're going to start zoomed in in Depew, which is where Transit Road is closed in both directions between Walden Avenue and Broadway. I did just get off the phone with Depew Police, and that is because of a natural gas leak in the area. You should have just gotten a News 4 push alert about it. We'll let you know as soon as the road is reopened. Teresa, back to you. It is blocking the left lane. News 4 has a crew on the way there. We'll have some live pictures for you as soon as we get them. Then in Amherst on the 90 or the 990 northbound, we have a rollover accident just beyond Audubon Parkway, also blocking the left lane. Watch for some lane closures on inbound Route 5. Right lane will be closed during parts of the morning drive this week so that crews can work on fence installation. Tentatively scheduled for 9 this morning through 6 tomorrow morning and then again Again, on Thursday and Friday, the work is time sensitive, so just prepare for delays. Back to you. The Broadway and the circus all in the same place. Lauren Hall went behind the scenes with a touring production of Pippin at Chase Performing Arts Center. Lauren, how was it? It's great. Good morning in theater. You won't make it very far unless you're a triple threat and you know how to sing, dance, and act. But in this show, you also have to know how to do a backflip.
way you'll freshen up a beloved Broadway show for an all-new audience. How about adding a bunch of acrobats? We go along our way. That's the formula for the Pippin revival that brought the Stephen Schwartz musical back to Broadway in 2013. It won four Tony Awards that year and is now on a national tour. There's this kind of extended metaphor over this entire show that life is a circus. So he's being thrown into these crazy experiences that are choreographed in this circus spectacle. Brian Flores has been with the show for six months, landing the part of the title role right after he graduated college. Even when he is sharing the stage with the Seven Fingers acrobats, he is in awe of what they can do. They are sick. They are really, really good, and they are so consistent, and they are so supportive of each other. And you know, like if somebody falls, somebody's there to catch them. And acrobats are a whole other animal because you really have to get along because your life is in their hands. Broadway great and Tony Award winner Priscilla Lopez also stars in the touring production. She appeared in the original Bob Fosse version in the 70s. This time around, she finds herself flying on a trapeze. They are flipping people and catching them and, you know, you don't want anybody being mad at you. <laughs> oh, I miss. <laughs> I understood what she meant once I met Nico Maffey, hand balancer and contortionist in the show. He studied at Argentinian Circus School and Harvard University. What a combination. And he gave me some handstand pointers. That's better. That's better. Yes. Yes. Much better. Yeah. Push with your, push with your shoulders. Whether you're performing in the show or just sitting in the audience for it, it's all about what you learn when everything is upside down. So the acrobats have to warm up and stretch for at least an hour before every performance, which they do eight of a week while on tour. There are five more left this weekend at Shays, and we'll post a link to ticket information under the Found It On 4 section of WIVB.com. Lauren Hall, News 4 Wake Up. Nice job with the handstand, Lauren. Just came out of nowhere in this story. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Six, there's a new furry creature here at Buffalo that has a lot of people talking. So cute. Our, our new baby gorilla attached Ta -ta. to her mom. Very sweet if you haven't checked it out yet. Lauren Hall went on the job with the people who take care of these guys around the clock. The Buffalo Zoo's newest addition has only been around for a couple weeks, but the birth was such a big deal, the announcement required billboards. I keep getting texts and messages like, we got to come to the zoo, we saw the billboard with the baby. So it's just, it's a really exciting time for us. Emily Detine is one of the gorilla keepers here. She's helping to take care of the new delivery, even if from afar. The baby was born on January 10th at 11.04 uh, p.m. And it was a really fast birth, which was awesome for Sydney. Sydney is the baby's mother and Koga is the father. They, along with three other gorillas, make up the zoo's gorilla troop. Emily and the other keepers were there for the big moment. The birth went really smooth. She's a terrific mom. The baby was nursing within a half hour. The keepers are prepared to hand rear the baby if they have to, but Sydney is a very good mom so far. So the staff has to keep a safe distance. They still don't even know the gender. That is very tricky, especially because she is supposed to hold the baby at all times and has held the baby at all times. So we actually haven't been able to really see, get a good look to see if it's a boy or a girl, but we're happy with either. The baby's doing really well. If you want to see Sydney holding her baby, the best time to come to the zoo is either at noon or 2.15 during feeding times. That's when one of the keepers climbs up on the canopy and throws the food down. No protein, it's all produce, and it's all vegetables mainly. They do get apples and bananas in the morning, carrots, sweet potato, a bunch of greens, um, that kind of stuff. Sydney usually eats at this spot right here while never letting go of her little one. She's clearly proud of her baby, and the keepers are just as proud of her. I keep saying it, but she's just such a great mom that, like, when you see her come out and feed, she's just, she'll show you the baby right away, and it's just exciting to have another gorilla um, at the zoo. Lauren Hall, News 4 Wake Up.